It's a pleasure uh, having you watching Church of Uganda Family TV and specifically HealthPort. HealthPort is a program that is centered around maternal and child health, early childhood development, and other public health concerns. This program is brought to you by Makerere University School of Public Health in partnership with Church of Uganda Family TV. And Edwin Austin Mukalazi is my name, your host. So, uh, today we are looking at one of those serious aspects that you need to know, especially when it comes to public health. We've talked about uh, road accidents uh, often on this program. I remember one time we had Jimmy Osrich sharing with us the burden of road accidents and uh, we've had very many people discuss about road accidents. Now, looking at the burden of road accidents, what happens after uh, people have had accidents, especially in the process of healing and regaining uh, their normal shape or their normal strength. And then we also look at people who are aging. Uh, there are times when your, your, your legs cannot support you or where you, you have to need a support. And then we also look at uh, people who fall sick and then when you're trying to heal sometimes you don't you do not regain your earlier shape so there is a lot that we are looking at but we are looking at the need for physical rehabilitation why would you need this rehabilitation especially if you're recovering from an injury or sickness or maybe you're suffering with old age so with us is uh, Okelo Simon Peter. Okelo Simon Peter is a research associate at the TRIAD. TRIAD is a Trauma, Injury and Disability Unit, which is part of um, Makere University School of Public Health. And he's also a coordinator of uh, RELAB HS. So he is going to share with us. But uh, before I request him to greet us, Simon, you're most welcome to HealthPort and kindly greet our viewers who are watching you right now. Thank you very much, Edwin, and thank you for having me. My name is Okello Peter Simon. I'm a research associate and the project coordinator for Relab HS project at the, at the Triad Unit, School of Public Health, Macquarie University. And I'm very much privileged to be talking to you today. Wow, we are also excited, especially about the topic that we are going to discuss today, which is the need for physical rehabilitation. So maybe if we can uh, draw it from the starting point, what is rehabilitation? Yeah, thank you very much. Mm. Uh, rehabilitation mm. are, is a set of measures in healthcare uh, to help someone restore their normal function, improve their health and well-being, reduce and limit uh, impairment and disability, and, uh, and, and at the same time improve the quality of life. So these are healthcare interventions to put back those people who have become disabled as a result of maybe an accident, as a result of any other form of injury, sickness, which does diseases that make people disabled. Uh, people can be disabled by reason of conflict, like war, if you, you've been aware that Uganda has had war. And Northern Uganda, actually in the past, has had many people having the need for rehabilitation after uh, being shot at. So uh, people get grow old and because of age might need rehabilitation because age brings disability. So rehabilitation is just those health interventions to restore and try to help people get back their normal function. So as we look at rehabilitation, uh, especially when you say that these are interventions that help people regain, so we look at road accidents as one of the leading causes of injuries and disabilities. So how is this burden uh, in Uganda? Yeah, you, you've, you've been reading the news yeah. and uh, there are seasons in Uganda when we have a lot of carnage on the road mm -hmm. and road uh, traffic, uh, road traffic uh, crashes have led people to, 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 to die. You've seen casualties. Yeah. And for Uganda, every year we have over 12,000 people that are actually lost. Uh, 12,000 crashes every year. And these crashes lead to fatalities, lead to permanent injuries. 
And so people that get injured on the road are actually increasing every other day. And these people end up in hospitals. And you, as you are aware, Uganda is still not having has not integrated rehabilitation services into the healthcare. So you will need, you, you now see that people are spending a lot of money out of pocket to pay for rehabilitation. And because rehab across the world is very expensive, rehab is specialized care, and most of our family members cannot afford rehabilitation. So we look at the, now the burden of our road traffic injuries to the health system, since you said mm. that uh, Uganda has not uh, incorporated a rehabilitation in the health system. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we, we see people spending a lot of money, even government spends almost the 300 million. How does the government spend this yet has not incorporated it in its system? Yeah, it, it, uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you can look at our health system, most of the, the only rehab facilities that are available are in maybe Mulago, Mulago National Referral Hospitals, and there is a small component of rehabilitation that is happening at the, at the referral hospitals. Because you'll find there's an orthopedic unit, there's yeah. a physiotherapy, physiotherapy unit, but they are not equipped. And there's also lack of trained professionals. Actually, it, we have in Uganda one, uh, 10, 10 uh, physiotherapy uh, rehabilitation professionals actually serve over one million people. So there is a very big gap in, in resourcing for rehabilitation in our country. And there are no supplies, there are no equipment. So we, are, we still have it, uh, a gap in providing this essential health care, which is most of the time not, care, uh, not, not provided for. Now looking at the importance and the validity of our topic, mm. uh, the need for physical rehabilitation, I want us to first of all look at the cost implication, mm. especially when it comes to the road traffic injuries. Mm. Mm. You, you've gone to Mulago and you've seen the world, the casualty world. Yes. It's full of uh, pedestrians who've been knocked mm. on the road, uh, border, border riders and a few passengers and persons that have used motorized uh, transport. Now, when you crash, and, uh, and out of the crashes actually that happen on our roads, 50% of these people need surgical intervention. And for our country, a surgical intervention costs almost 3 million shillings per day for care, if you want really good care. So people spend up to 13 million out of pocket to try to recover their, uh, their function, to have surgeries, to have treatment, and you know, being helped to get back to themselves and it takes a long time. So the cost to our government is increasing because we are seeing a lot of admissions in referral hospitals. We are seeing almost 39 people on average are getting admitted with critical, with need for critical care after road crash across the country. So that's a very high number. And for the last two years, we've seen an increase in our hospital admissions at referral hospitals going from 5,000 to 11,000. And that, that's accounting for almost 45% of hospital admissions across the country. And this is very alarming. And all these people that get admitted, 50% of them need surgical intervention to put them back to normal function. And that's very costly for our country. Now let us get into the real gist of this program, mm. uh, where we're looking at rehabilitation. Yes. And let us start from rehabilitation uh, after injuries, uh, what are some of the injuries that uh, someone can be rehabilitated after? Maybe before that, I would mm. give you a real picture of what, uh, what, what the need for rehabilitation is like. Yes, yes, yes. Globally, and yes. even here. Mm. It, we're almost coming to, uh, it's, it's, it's estimated but that almost 2.4 people across the world need rehabilitation. And this essential health care is not available in many places. And for Uganda, it's only available in, in cities in, in, and, and specialized clinics. So people who are not in cities, who are not in urban centers, are finding it hard after maybe an accident or injury or sickness that has caused them to lose the ability to get rehabilitated. And so for Uganda... And I believe even those who can get it, it is, it is expensive. Yes, it's expensive. Someone has to sell at least a, a plot of land to attain the service. You've seen some, some of the, the profiles that I've done on, 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 on the media. Yeah. When pe people lose, uh, get accidents and lose the ability to function. Yeah. It is costly to be treated. Mm. It's costly to see an orthopedic to repair broken bones. 
you've seen people go to Pumi, mm. the orthopedic hospital, yes. because there's a specialist there, and there's, there's nothing less than three million to spend when you go there with a broken bone. People go, come to hospitals with brain injuries, you know, you know, damaged nerves, damaged spine. If you go to the spinal ward in Mulago, people are inert, people are inactivated by, by reason of injury, and maintaining them is very costly. People lose their renal function. They can no longer pass urine normally. They cannot go to the toilet normally. And maintaining such a patient does not only, uh, uh, the costs are not only related to the, to the patient. It affects the family. Some people drop out of school yeah. to take care. Some people drop out of their work to take care. Families are impacted on, and the economic, uh, 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 the economic you know, situation yeah. in the family is poorly adjusted, mm -hmm. and people fail to meet their bills and pay sure. for services because there's a relative who actually is churning out money mm -hmm. for treatment. Sure. Yeah. So like I said earlier, mm -hmm. 13 million for maintaining a, a, a relative or a friend or a family member mm -hmm. is not small, and, and the chances of even recovery might not be there. Sure. So that's how serious the problem is. So we, um, at, at the Triad Unit, are currently running the Relab HS project. Mm -hmm. And it's sponsored, uh, supported by John Hopkins University. It's a grant from USAID. Mm -hmm. And so the Relab HS project is trying to engage government by providing evidence base for government to begin to see the need to integrate rehabilitation, physical rehabilitation services into the health system. So that at the Health Center 4, Health Center 3, we have a certain level of physical rehabilitation happening, and then referral pathways are created to send critical conditions, maybe to regional referral hospitals or to national level. That's what the Relab HS is currently doing, and already we've had uh, uh, about three studies going on now. The policy priority research study is to help inform policy on the need for rehabilitation. We've done the, the, the mapping for rehabilitation services across, across the country, we had an integration study to map mm -hmm. rehab services and to see how many uh, rehab professionals are available to provide this service. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we get to, uh, after giving us that um, background information mm -hmm. about rehabilitation and how important rehabilitation is. This program is brought to you by Makere University School of Public Health. So today we are discussing the need for physical rehabilitation. And with us is Okelo Peter Simon, who is a research associate in the triad unit of Makere University School of Public Health. So Simon, as we went for the break, we are and now going to look at, or we are now going to look at the categories of the other that need this physical rehabilitation and how uh, can these categories be helped? Yeah, the, the burden for rehabilitation in, mm. is increasing as we see people with old age, yeah. okay, by reason of old age, mm. getting uh, to lose their function, not able to walk, not able to sit. Uh, not able, they're, they're losing renal function because of age, losing eyesight. Mm -hmm. So these, the, the, those categories, those that are injured, those that have suffered long-term illness, those that have been crushed on the road, come with uh, different, uh, let's say, levels of need, mm -hmm. okay? But if you look at our health system now, the very first place for primary health care is, uh, is the health center one, ideally. It should be the VHT. Yeah. Then you go to Health Center 2, we still have some Health Center 2s, yeah. Health Center 3. You know, our communities are not, have not been, our system has not prepared enough mm -hmm. to provide rehab services. Of course, we have community rehabilitation uh, persons that are, uh, if you heard about community based rehabilitation, but they, they just have the elementary knowledge. They do not, they are not able to support more than maybe make a reference. So we have those categories, people that have suffered because of long-term illness. But you see, if you can go to a health center for per se, you will notice that the only rehab services that might be happening is a cast on the leg that is broken. Yeah. Beyond that might not be there. You might need to pay a lot more money to get specialized 
treatment. There are no physiotherapists. There are no occupational therapists. Mm. And, and so there is still a gap mm. in provision of these services. Even when you know that we have a lot of people, categories of people that need mm. rehab services. Mm. And there are, there are actually levels of need, like we said earlier. Mm. Mm. So um, we now want to look at the importance of this rehabilitation because Yes, we realize that uh, there is a need, but then someone might be thinking, if I spend my one year uh, or my six months mm. with a cemented leg, mm. and then after, I'll walk again. Is that all they need? Uh, how important is this rehabilitation to their health? Uh, like I said, restoring someone to normal function. Is it possible that after this rehabilitation mm. you can regain your normal function? It's not a guarantee, but if given a chance, many people recover. I can give you a good example. Mm. You see me wearing uh, glasses. Yeah. If I was not given an assistive device, I would be struggling to do my work. Mm. Okay? Rehabilitation goes on with assistive technology. Okay? I might not recover fully, but I need a crutch. Mm. My leg could have been cut off but I need a proselyte. Mm. You get a picture? Uh, that, some, that, that technology that assists me if I cannot re recover fully, mm. okay? So if you look at some of the, the assistive devices per se, they're very expensive. Yeah. Mm? If you, uh, let's talk about uh, eye care. You, you've seen how much they charge True. for you to be able to see. Yeah. The, the proselyte is not, is not the, the factory is not here. People import these things and they're very expensive. That's why you see people still hopping around, even when a leg could be actually manufactured for them. We see people struggling, maybe a corset yeah. to help him, a brace. Some of the assistive devices that help to let people get back to improve their ability to function are very expensive. Orthopedic clinics, the private ones, are really so uh, charging high, a lot of money. And so people now suffer. In their, in the, within their homes, not able to reach out to receive service because they cannot pay for it. Mm. So if, if we have an integrated system and fund it, we would see people beginning to uh, get back to function. Might not be 100%, but they might be supported to do something out of their life. Okay? So uh, we, to, to get me back to 100% function mm. can happen mm. because I can naturally heal. But if, that, if there is no intervention to support me to natural heal, I may not heal. How soon should this intervention be? It's now. It should have been yesterday. Okay? But since yesterday is gone. You, you, saw, you saw the, the video uh, of our president of Sudan. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and some people went to jail for showing that he urinated himself. Mm. He's a candidate for rehabilitation. Okay? Old age is bringing some disability. Hmm? And he, he could have benefited from rehab services, rehab services. He may not recover 100%, but something could have been done to try to help him improve. So all of us, by reason of age, by reason of accident, maybe long-term illness, might need rehabilitation services one day. And that's why our, our health system should be, should, should be improved. We should begin to see uh, rehab services becoming part of our routine care in our health facility. Yeah, when I asked that, how soon uh, should mm. someone go, and you told me it is now, um, I look at someone uh, who thinks everything is normal on their bodies, mm. uh, so they don't see a reason as to why they should seek for rehabilitation services. Is it that, uh, how can I know that it is now the time I should go? Is it after visiting and doing medical checkups, or there is, I just go and start on to the rehabilitation services? If, 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 you, if you're living your life and then one day you feel your fingers cannot hold a cup of tea, that means you're losing function of your fingers. One day you discover you can't hear, okay? Just one day you discover, I think my ear is not working well. I can no longer read, okay? One day you wake up and knocked by a border border and your leg is broken. Of course, um, when you get injured or when you get disabled by whatever reason, you will be challenged. You will not do the things that you're supposed to do normally. And that calls for intervention. That, that is a sign that you need a measure 
to restore you back to normal function. The very fact that you're not doing things the way you're supposed to do. You've lost the leg. How can we give you back your leg? You've lost the hearing. How can we restore it back? You no longer cannot see well. And when you go to the hospital, they will tell you why you're not seeing. Okay? You're not, you're not, these days, you're not urinating normally. Hmm? They will tell you why. But then we need a system that is prepared, not only to tell you why, but also to, to respond. There must be an intervention to try to help you get back to your normal life. And you know, rehabilitation needs have brought people shame. Mm. Hmm? We, we just gave you the scenario of the president yeah. eh? having urine flow. That's shame. On a public event. Yes. That's shame. And you, you no longer cannot, bathe, you cannot bathe yourself because your arm is not working. You, you cannot squat to the toilet because your back cannot bend. All those are signs that you need measures in our healthcare to help you get back to your normal function. And that is all about physical rehabilitation. Measures to improve your well-being and your health to take you back to how you used to be. You may not be 100%, but you should be able to at least do much. Mm. Eh? So Up to 70 or 80. Yes, even, even 90. Okay. So that you can improve your well-being mm. and improve your quality of life. So, looking at someone who is watching us today, even mm. as we are winding up with this discussion, mm. please uh, kindly re-emphasize the need for physical rehabilitation as we also call upon the stakeholders in this to render their support so that we can see people acquiring this service at least at ease. Yeah, we have, the, the need for rehabilitation is vast, like we've explained, by reason of disease, so by, by, by the reason of injury, people fight at home yeah. and they get injured and might really become disabled. We've had domestic violence becoming one of the reasons for disability. We've seen people uh, knocked on the road. We've seen people uh, born with impairment. And some, like, a good, maybe I can conclude with this. A good example is club foot disease. No one should be lame because he had a club foot disease. It is possible to rehabilitate the child with club foot disease because there's technology to, for that. They can, there's a cast technology in our health system and it actually happens at the health center for I think. Today's the health center for level. So every mother who sees that the child is born with legs that are loose should actually seek health care, should not treat it as, as a witchcraft, should not treat it as something that is, is, is weird. This thing can be corrected. Why would a man grow to walk on the back of his legs when it can be when he could have been rehabilitated and be, live a normal life so the the need for rehabilitation is really vast and in uganda we have over 500,000 people in need of physical rehabilitation so we need we, the, the, the real abhs is is generating evidence to, to for a case for the government to invest money in physical rehabilitation i pray that this uh, this evidence will be Will, will inform policy development and funding to be given to the, to, to the healthcare, particularly to improve rehabilitation services. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Peter Simon, for this discussion. And to you, our viewer, it's a pleasure that you started with us and you've watched up to this particular point. We've been discussing the need for physical rehabilitation. Do not be the next victim. You can resist it or you can resist that disability before it is because there is a lot to do. Just in case you joined in late, you can as well go to our YouTube channel that is COU Family TV and you will find this program there. Adrian Austin Mkalazi is my name. God bless you. We'll meet again next time.